So, what is the best way to celebrate your birthday? You are right, making a new video. Today I want to show you the CH559 chip, which is the biggest of the CH55X chip series, which got uh, 64 kilobyte of ROM and 6 kilobyte of RAM, but also it got two USB host or one USB slave connection on board, which I will show in this video and show how to connect to an Arduino with the example code I made with Bitlumi together. So these are the CH559 chips. They are pretty cheap at around one dollar from 10 pieces and up and they will get cheaper if you buy more. You may already saw my older videos on the CH552 chip, which is a 20, pound, uh, 20 cents version of it. And yeah, I have this small board here, which only contains the chip itself, two capacitors and three LEDs with the resistors. And of course, to USB sockets, where for once now is a mouse receiver connected and it got 5 volt power from an ESP32 and also the serial connection to the ESP32. And the example I want to show is an SPI display which is connected to the ESP which then again yeah, um, gets the data from the CH559 chip. The best way to show this example is, I think, to show you the display and move the mouse a little bit around. As you can see, it will yeah, show the pixel position and also I added a small cursor to it. And if I now press the left mouse key, I can also paint a little bit in the window and write something down. You see that the cursor overrides its second pass or its last pass, so it doesn't stay on screen. But that's just for the example. So I can, yeah, paint a bit on it. If I now press the right button, everything uh, gets cleared and we can start again. I now can also connect a keyboard to the chip, which I will do now. The keyboard does light up and shows a little bit that it is connected. And if I now press some keys, the text I write will get shown on the display. In that way we can also write on it. Okay, it seems I have to write it in English uh, keyboard layout. So here is a pinout overview of the chip. You see many pins are available. But overall, the schematic we are using is quite simple, as we will see in the next picture. We just have to connect 5 volt power supply plus two capacitors, one for the 5 volt rail and one for the 3.3 volt rail, which is internally created by the chip. Also, we need to connect the two USB sockets. And on the bottom we see one button to bring the chip into bootloader mode. If we connect the power and hold the button while we are doing it, the chip will get into its bootloader so we can flash a new firmware onto it. Also on the top we see the connection which has the serial RX and TX that is going to connect to the ESP. So, as mentioned, to flash a new firmware onto the chip, we need to connect the bootloader pin to ground, which I put here on this PCB, and I am using a tweezer for it. And now, if we power it on, while yeah, bridging it, it is in bootloader mode, 
and I yeah made this small USB to USB adapter so I don't need another USB plug on the board so I can just plug it in and the other side can now go into the computer and then it will start and gets uh, recognized on the PC so we can flash it. This board was designed for another project but it turns out it is pretty useful even for yeah other development as the these two pins I yeah put onto it were for the UART1 connection and original it was some selector pin I put on there so I was very lucky. By the way, this video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is an online PCB service with great quality and low price. If we for example calculate 10 PCBs of 10 by 10 centimeters, we can quote it and we will see that they are only at $5 and with China Post even at only $10 shipping. So for 10 PCBs we only pay $15 shipped, which is quite nice. You also have the uh, variants of different colors you can choose for the same price. To get the code onto your CH555 ship, if you want to rebuild this, you can simply download this repo from GitHub. I will put a link in the description. There you have all the things you need to create the firmware for it. There's already a compiled version in it, but also there is the Arduino code and also the STC C compiler is in there, as you see here. So you can simply click on compile.bat and it will compile the firmware that is written inside the files you find in it. So for example, the main.c contains the main functions and the startup and the rest gets yeah, parted onto the different files. For example, the USB host file contains all the USB stuff and also the UART um, file contains the UART stuff. You can simply click through it and read a bit. I have to make a shout out to Bitlooney because we made this code together in a week worth of work and I am really happy by the outcome in the end and yeah. The next thing you need is to um, download the VCH ESP tool. This is needed to get the firmware onto the chip via USB. You can simply click on the download link and it will yeah, uh, be an installer. You have to install it once and I will just simply open it now. So you will get greeted by this um, overlay or GUI and you can select the 8-bit CH55X series and there should already be the CH559 selected and if not you can simply click on it. Also you have to select run the target program after download complete because then the um, uh, bootloader will get exited after a file was successfully flashed. You can then select a user file here and I am simply selecting the compiled file on the desktop. Then you can uh, connect your CH559 chip, which I will do just now. I put the tweezer in and also connect the USB cable and it should be yeah, visible in the tool. And as you see, it is now one device connected and it successfully saw it and you can then just simply click on download and it will write the firmware onto it. And now it is usable with the USB code. Yeah, what I also want to show is a little bit of the Arduino code. I wrote a simple um, UART protocol for it 
which is not perfect and can definitely be yeah, made better. And the code is also yeah, just working and I am using it in my example I showed you. So I yeah, go a little bit through it. Um, first you just, oh, let's start at another point. First you create a serial. In this case it is on pin 16 and pin 17 on the ESP32. You have a few variables here in the beginning for once a UART buffer where the received data gets yeah, saved. And then in the loop we check if data is available from the CH chip and it will just save when this was. So we have yeah just the knowledge about it and we'll put it into the UART buffer which will get incremented every round before and there it already looks into it if the yeah if it is at position zero and if the data is fe it's just that the program knows okay here is a buffer start and it's not a wrong command or some wrong data it will just take uh, set here the flag and it will go through it and yeah after this is connect or this is complete it will yeah open this void or go to this void and will pass the command itself it will yeah get all the data from it and in this example it will just print it onto the serial port and you can yeah look into arduino and see what is happening and what data is coming in yeah, and yeah, you can then simply connect any mouse or keyboard to it in the current state and it will print out data to the serial monitor or in the display example you can also uh, see a bit more parsing as you can see here for example it will look what keyboard key is getting in and it will write the different things to the display which will then again get passed here in the hit poll which is here and you could also um, disable the comments here to let it print out also on the serial monitor to make it um, visible what is happening in the background but I disabled it because it's a little bit slower than because it has to write everything to the yeah serial port. Also here it will check if the device type is a mouse. So in my example then it will get the mouse x and y variables out of the data. It's a 16-bit value in this mouse so you have to look into your mouse and yeah choose the right bit length and position but you can yeah just enable this section to see what data is which data and yeah so this goes on and on here also here it will read out the keyboard data where i know the shift and uh, control buttons are in the buffer 11 at that point and then it will just set the shift to make uppercase letters and yeah just look through the code and you will find your way it's all there for you to try here is how the data will look if you plug a new device into one of the USB ports so you can for once see that a device is connected then you see which port number and also you see the string of the device, how the device is named. So in this case it's a Repu wireless device. Also you can see the device descriptor, which you can pass with an online tool. I will also put it down in the description. You can also put the hit descriptor there, so you can see what kind of device is it and uh, if it ha is yeah, a mouse, a keyboard, and also if it has, yeah, 
five buttons, ten buttons, uh, what other yeah parts it has. This is also a future improvement to do it di directly onto the device. It is kind of implemented, but because there are just too many different devices and device types, you just cannot get all of them to be perfect. So it's easier to simply just pass it yourself. And if I now click the button of the mouse, you will see there is data incoming from it. And you can for once see that this byte is changing, which will show that yeah, the button was, sh was pressed and then released. And also if I am moving the mouse now, you can see the four bytes after it are changing. And these are the X and Y position or movement. And it's yeah not the relative position. It's just a plus or a minus from the current position. So you, if I, yeah, go to the right, you can see that there is a one always. But if I move fast to the right, you can see that the numbers are higher. And also the display and the Arduino is passing it that way. You can see the front numbers here. This is the position that gets displayed on the screen and you can do stuff with it. And yeah, this way you can also pass or yeah, make it compatible to other mouses or keyboards. If you yeah, just look into what byte is changing, if you do something, you can yeah, put it here in the parsing algorithm and check it for your own purpose and do it how you want to do it. You also have here always the yeah, correct um, PID and VID number. So you can, even if you have uh, two mouses connected, you can uh, separate them every time. If you say one mouse is from that company and the other from another company, you can differ them still and pass them correct. With the keyboard, it looks quite the same. The only thing I uh, saw that is different if you connect a joystick or a gamepad, some of them send data all the time, so they don't stop and only send if you move a stick or push a button. They will yeah, just send out all the time uh, this can get tricky to pass in time on the Arduino because it's just too fast for it, but it will get recognized most of the time. It depends on the device. You can just try it. Also, it is also possible to connect a USB flash stick to it, but it will not do much right now. Also, for example, a USB to serial converter can also be connected and could be passed or could be made compatible to it. So that's a thing for the future. So that's it for today with this cheap USB host chip. You can yeah get them and try it out yourself because you don't need any programmer or anything. You can just start right at this point and it's super simple. You can order your PCB for it, design it very quick and easy and get it from PCB way, for example. And yeah, please check out Bitlooney's video about it. So he will make a useful project out of it. I just made it working and saw or yeah, wanted to get it working. And yeah, have a great day.